Hi, in this video I want to show how I created this clock by using a shader material and a soft body node from Godot. So firstly, we create a new plane in Blender and I will rotate it 90 degrees in the edit mode and I move it to the right so we can take a better look at it. I make sure that the origin aligns with the upper edge and then I move the whole plane up and I scale it down a little bit. I try to um, consider the proportions of the player. So I take the lower edge and move it a little bit down. And I make sure to reapply the scale to 1 again. So I hit Control A and reapply the scale back to 1, as you can see here. Then in edit mode, I subdivide the plane a bit for the vertex displacement later. And then I take some edges and move them in a way to receive a more and cloak-like locking structure. And then we create a new material and we will load our image in there, which you can find in the video description. And then I try to take the outer edges or vertices and I try to encircle the cloak-like texture to get a more convincing looking uh, cloak after, um, in the end. And then I add the, uh, the separate RPG node and I take the red channel and I move it or I com connect it to the alpha output. And to see the result, I enable back face culling and uh, I will recalculate the normals by pressing shift N in the edit mode. And I also set the blend mode to alpha clip so we can see only the texture we want. And then you can just export your cloak as for instance .obj file to your Godot folder. In Godot, in the player character scene, we will look for the skeleton and we will add a bone attachment there. And in my case I will rename it to chest bone. And we will add another child node there. This will be the soft body node which will be important for the cloth simulation later. And there under mesh we will load our created cloak in there. And the cloak will appear on the bottom. That is because we need to assign our bone attachment to a certain bone. In my case it's the bone right there in the middle. It depends on your armature system. And I will select the right bone there in the properties. Then I will position the cloak in the right place. And on the right side in the properties, I will make sure to assign the kinematic body of the player at the top to the collision ignore. And I set the total mass to 10, the stiffness to 1, and the damping coefficient to 0 0.07. Then I select my vertices, which I want the cloak to stick on the player. And there under attachments, I open them up and I will assign the created chest bone node for every one of them. And that will look like this in runtime. Then we will create our new shader material. So we create a new shader. It's from shader type spatial, of course. And we will disable culling and enable the def draw alpha prepass. And then we create our first variable. It's the variable pi. And then we will create a variable from type vector4, which will contain our color information in the shader parameters, which you can see on the right. And I go, for instance, with a red right there. And then we create three new variables from type sampler 2D, which will contain our texture information for the cape, the normal map, and the noise, as you can see right there. Now we will create a void vertex function for the vertex displacement. And in there, I will create new variables. The first one is the scaled UV variable. And we take our UV there and we will multiply it by 0 0.5. And for the noise variable, we will load our noise texture in there and we use the scale UV and add it with a 
vector tool is pointing in the x direction and as we can see here the speed variable doesn't exist yet so we will create the variable speed and in my case i will set the speed to 0 0.25 the next variable will be our displacement variable and it will be from type float and what we will need what will we do here is we will take our noise texture and we will multiply it by 2 and subtract it by 1. And what this does is it transforms the values from 0 to 1 to minus 1 to 1. And we will multiply it by the strength. I made a spelling mistake there, but that is not important. And I will set the strength variable to 0 0.1. And I want the whole displacement be dependent on the position on the uv dot y. So I take the displacement and I will multiply it by the uv in the y direction. And that is basically everything for the vertex shape function. So we take our vertex and we will assign it to a vector 3. And for the um, Y component, we don't want to have any movement at all. So I will only assign the displacement to the X and Z component. And I set the Z component negative, as you can see in the code. And the last thing we need to do is to load our noise texture. So we go to the parameters and we create a new noise texture. I enable seamless and I set the resolution to 128. And I create a new open simplex noise and set the period to 32 and the persistence to zero. And that is how our noise looks. And we currently see nothing. That is because I forgot to add the plus in line 25. And now we can see a subtle vertex displacement. And in real time, it looks like this. If we take a look at the game, and it's very subtle, but if we add the texture later, you can, you will see the vertex displacement um, a bit more. So to load our textures in there, we will create a fragment function. And in the fragment function, we will firstly create a variable from type vector4, and I will name it cape, and we will assign our texture, our cap texture there, and the UV. And now if we, and now we want to see the texture on the screen, so we take our albedo output and we will assign the cape with the red, green and blue channels. And then you will see the cap texture appear if we load our texture in there, of course. And of course, we want to colorize our texture, so I will multiply it with our colors. And now we have a red color, but I will change the color to a more brownish one. And we do the same thing to our alpha output, but instead of the color channels, we will use our alpha channel for this one. And then the cape will look like this. And in the last step, we will um, take our normal map output and we will load our normal map texture in there. And uh, you, um, for the vector 2, we will take the UV. And of course, we will need to load our normal map texture in the shader parameters, of course. And in real time, the clock will look like this and you are basically finished there but I want to add two more things uh, for uh, polishing purposes so firstly a tune shader which was made by Captain Proton 42 and from the tune shader we will take the staircase to split diffuse and the split, split specular functions and the most important um, function the void light function and I will put everything in the description that was made by him and also his Twitter account if you are interested in learning more about the stuff that he does. And I will also load the corresponding um, variables for the light function in there as well. 
and under the shader parameters, I uh, will set the cuts to four. I turn the attenuation and the rim off and set the specular strength to 0 0.01. And I will um, lighten the color a little bit. And then you have an effect like this. And if I, for instance, move in this direction, you can see the reflective surface of the cloak, which gives it a leatherish look, in my opinion. So the last thing I want to add is a static body to prevent clipping with the cloak and the body from the player. So I will create a new bone attachment and I name it hip bone. And I will create a static body as a child and a collision shape as another child. And we will create a sphere shape and set the hip bone to the um, hip bone in the armature system. And then I select the collision shape and I will scale it down a little bit. I go with a value about 0 0.2 or 0 0.3. It depends on your player character. And I will position the static body in the right place. And if we play the scene now, you will see that the player does weird things. That is because we need to set our collision layers, right? So we will set the collision layer of the static body to the second layer and we will enable the second collision layer also to the soft body node. And then everything works um, fine in the um, scene. And that is basically everything for this um, tutorial. I also wanted to emphasize my gratitude to firstly Captain Proton42 who created the light shader and I will put the link in the description for his flexible tune shader where I got this knowledge from. And I will also put his social media links in the description as well. And sadly, a big thanks to Wojtek, who let me use the testing area, which you have seen in the background and where the player was walking in. And thanks for that as well. And I will link his YouTube channel in the description as well. And I hope this tutorial is okay. If you're interested in other tutorials or have any requests for tutorials, uh, feel free to ask. And I will try to upload the shader on godoshaders.com as well in a couple of days. Nonetheless, um, have a good day and take care. Goodbye.